My name is Sakshi Dubey and I'm a senior software engineer working in robotics and artificial intelligence. I know it may sound like rocket science, but actually it is not. You may find it impressive, but trust me, anybody can do it. Honestly, I didn't know how my job was perceived until I met a young girl at a high school conference. And during the conversation, I asked her, so what do you want to become? She simply said, not sure. Okay, I guess even I didn't know what I wanted to become back in high school. So I asked her again, posting about computer science. So why not a computer engineer? And she said, nah, it's out of my range. It's a rocket science. This statement was an eye-opener for me. I was curious to dive more, and hence, I asked a similar question to women at high school events, conferences, and virtual platforms. And it was astonishing to encounter that a lot of young women have a strong opinion that computing science is a rocket science. They seem so convinced that it's too hard to pursue careers in fields like artificial intelligence, robotics, neural networking, and whatnot. This realization inspired me to find an initiative, Pink Tech Decoded, with the hope to express STEM education for young girls and motivate Gen Z to take the path of computing. It's no surprise that only 79% of tech industry is women. And hence, I decided to support them. I envision to support young women at every step of their career journey by ensuring they have access to baseline education, they know how to code, they know how to streamline the specialization process, and ultimately thrive in their computing jobs. The first step in their STEM career journey is to have access to baseline education. And unfortunately, there's still many young girls who don't have access to their basic right, education. The world's literacy rate stands at 79% of women, which means that even today, 21% of girls never ever get a chance to visit school. With the help of my initiative, I'm trying to reach primary schools to educate high school students and to just gain more knowledge. In this, I'm trying to provide basic resources, free books, and even sponsoring free education to girls to help them. Having baseline education is the first step towards a STEM career journey. Now let's talk about the lucky section like us who got an opportunity to visit school and even get higher degrees. In my observation, students are encouraged to take computing subjects, but nobody taught them code. I want to recall your first program, going through textbooks, installing Visual Studio, debugging the code, and then finally seeing the output of Hello World. Knowing the code and actually running those codes are two different things. And in my observation, there are a lot of many young students who do not have access to set up their first code. They don't have assistance. I'm trying to collaborate with different primary schools and community centers to set up basic coding workshops. We are trying to give confidence to the young generation to start their first baby step. Now, let's talk about the current situation. I believe most of you have already have some background in computer science sources. But do you ever envision yourself as a specialist in human computer interaction, blockchain, machine learning, cybersecurity? Or do you think it is too hard to make a career in these fields? Knowing how to code from your data structure classes 
and actually using that domain knowledge as a real life professional is a big leap in a computing career. And there you need to bridge the gap. You do have good education. You do have good resources. And you may even know what you want to become in a career. But there is still that one doubt. Can I do it? So how to bridge this gap? Do you need to get an A in all the computing subjects? Talking about my experience, I, when I was doing my masters, I took a lot of computing subjects. For example, optical physics, electrical labs, even doing mathematics and integration, and doing self data analysis as well. And at times, I felt overwhelmed. But interestingly, you need not to know all of them. Honestly, I've even secured a C grade in electrical lab, but it was always an A in physics. Subjects like theory of computation just never interested me, but I was a top performer in the robotics group. So if I time travel eight years ago, I remember in my freshman year, I took interest in physics and data structures class. In sophomore, I got introduced to robotics club and completely got motivated to join it. Later on, I got introduced to AI classes and then I tried to gain expertise in IoT subjects. Eventually, LinkedIn was full of AI professionals and I didn't miss even a single keynote talk of my domain of any major conferences. The amalgamation of these step-by-step -step processes landed me where I am today. All right, now let's talk about one step further. Imagine you found your passion in computing and happened to join the glittering professional world. Life is sorted now, right? But wait, the experience afterwards. Usually a university graduate joins as a software engineer or say data science and works on a very basic functionalities. Eventually they seek to acquire deep knowledge of a specific domain and then they become an expert. However, they are not experts yet. Most likely they are surrounded by advanced professionals who are confident in their abilities. And here the imposter syndrome starts engulfing the early career professionals. Talking about my personal experience, when I transitioned from academia to tech industry, I faced imposter syndrome myself. Sometimes I had self-doubt in my own findings. It can definitely make you question your own abilities. While I was working with other early careers at Pink Tech, I realized more than 50% women shared the same feeling. It motivated me to begin a network group, to coach and provide mentorship to young students to smoothly transition from academia to tech industry. I even organized networking coffee chats and other early mentorship programs. These programs helped them to dream big and take lead paths in major computing fields say neural science, robotics, blockchain, and whatnot. As a leading women software engineer, I aspire to see many more women in computing the next decade. They're deciding their majors now, and we can help them to make a more informed career choice and amplify their lives. So first of all, how many of you are already established professionals or subject matter experts in your domain? And interestingly, how can we play a part in the process? I would encourage established professionals to share your learning experiences with young individuals to inspire them. I strongly believe sharing information on choosing basic courses, guiding to them towards side projects, and even talking about your journey can encourage them and make them aware of what they are capable of. A little help to young minds can help them take a giant career leap. And to all the students in the room, I would recommend this process to carve your computing journey. First of all, try to find out 
if there is any subject that interests you. Try to align your subject choices with specialized interest. Explore online courses, short talks, side projects. Talking about my own experience, joining Robotics Club and gaining expertise in IoT projects builds my foundation. And lastly, talking to professionals and learning from their career paths worked out best for me to overcome imposter syndrome. And finally, I want to talk about some women who started out where you are today and eventually became leaders in their fields. And let me give you a hint, a few of them are actually rocket scientists. Margaret Hefield Hamilton started with philosophy classes and became one of the first women scientists to write code for Apollo mission. Cheryl Sandberg, chief operating officer at Meta, started with economics. Katie Booman, a schoolgirl of Indiana who discovered the first image of black holes. And Nancy Jane Davis, a NASA astronaut, and one thing in common with all of you, a Georgia Tech alumni, and one day she was also sitting in the same lecture halls like you. And if you're not convinced yet, let me tell you a story of another girl. At 10, she saw the computer for the first time. At 15, she wrote her first line of code. At 22, she graduated with degrees in computer sciences. At 24, she's a leading robotics engineer and today is even given a TED talk. I guess you know by now who I'm talking about. At 10, I didn't know if I would become a robotics engineer, but it was those first steps that defined my journey. So if she can do it, it is certainly not rocket science for you as well. Thank you.